Hello guys and welcome to this new video series. Now, in this new video series, we will be using a library design expert to tackle uh, small but complete projects, right? Uh, everything down to the nuts and bolts and circlips and bill of materials. And we will be doing it uh, over the span of a few videos per project. Now, the point of this new series is, first of all, to uh, help you know new engineers design stuff that they will need in their everyday mechanical design engineering job right these are very very uh, simple and uh, common things that we will be designing but um, also to give you an insight on how i approach a project like that and how i take the decisions and make the design choices that i do uh, hopefully uh, that will help you as well now for our first project we will be doing an i-beam trolley really useful stuff so how would you go about doing that? Well, in this first video, we will do the I-beam. We'll design the I-beam. And to do that, we will need to get dimensions for it. So if I go into you know, Google and type in I-beam dimensions, yeah, dimensions, I get a couple of results. I scroll down and look, I see these guys, right? Engineers Edge. Really useful, really useful website. I've used it a lot. And sure enough, we have a table with uh, some sizes, right? Uh, now, you know what? The, the thing with I-beam trolleys is that there's not a single model for a single I-beam specification. So let's imagine that we have a client and he's assigned us to um, design his new line of I-beam trolleys. And... Um, so how would we approach it? Well, I would see how many different I-beam numbers or I-beam sizes there are in the market. Well, hundreds, I guess. But, you know, let's say I would ask the client, so which I-beams would you like to cover, right? And then I would break that down to a number that's uh, realistic. So let's say that these are the I-beams that our client wants to cover. Uh, make I beam trolleys for, and I would say here that, hmm, you know what I would do? I would cover one, two, three, four height sizes per model. Okay, oh, I can't, I can't select. Hmm. Anyway, well, I mean, I can't copy that, so I just hit print screen, bring up MS Paint. I, I use MS Paint very often. Cut out the table, and then Control C, Control Z twice. Smaller, and I just pasted it, and now. I'll save it because that's my reference. Okay. Now I see this, this is in inches, right? So let's pretend that our client is in the US or the UK or somewhere where they use the uh, imperial unit size. So we will design a, the, the trolley in inches as well. Um, because we will be using, you know, fasteners and washers and whatnot in inches. So, yeah, so our first I-beam trolley is going to cover the one, two, three, four, five, six first lines, right? So let's go ahead and make an I-beam, okay? So this is an, uh, this is an S3, isn't it? Isn't that the designation in the US? I think S is for standard flange, W is for wide flange, right? So this would be an S3 times the weight per length. Do I get that? Weight per foot. Yeah, yeah, weight per foot. So 1.6. And I give it a length of 72 inches. That's roughly a couple of meters. Okay, 
so we're starting okay so let's I'm going to start in the ZX plane right so why because I want the width of the I-beam on the x-axis and I want the length along the y-axis so we're starting we're, we're starting to make the outline of the I-beam um, again, this is an auxiliary part. No reason in breaking it up into, uh, you know, multiple sketches and features. Uh, again, a pretty simple project. So, uh, yeah, th this should suffice. By the way, I just used midpoint with three points. I've made a couple of videos on how that works. I make all the flange thickness equal, and I'll make the flange widths equal as well and I also need to center this flange width over here make these two vertical and let's see ah yeah and I need to center the web around the origin and now I can make my IB so I remember that this is three inches right so that's three inches. I don't remember the rest. So, you know, push to the side and there you go. So width 2.5. Hmm, maybe. My units, I'll go to millimeters. I'll show dual dimensions. Yeah, that might help me down the line. Okay, so there you go. Uh, web thickness, 0.13 inches. Okay, and flange thickness, 0.2 inches. 5.08, yeah. There you go. So that's my profile, right? I'll extrude that for 72 inches. And I have my I beam. That's how you design an I beam, right? Not uh not too much to it, but uh you know, it's still useful and you you know, it might even be more useful to go into the Equation editor and name these things. So this is the height. Um, this is the width. This is the web thickness, and this is the flange. Wait, doesn't it have data on the radius of that? Fillet radius. Yay! Quarter of an inch. Okay, let's go do the fillets as well. So, go. That's quarter of an inch. Yeah, basically, so this is our IB. Okay, and I'll I'll just give it a part color. It, it, it helps to have different colors for each part. Uh, it might not look very realistic, but it guides the eye really well. And so I'll give this a rusty uh, color. So that's my eye beam. Now, if I wanna uh, change it up, uh, make it you know into a different eye beam size, I just go through the equation editor, uh, apply the correct numbers, hit OK, and we're, we're done. And so this is the fillet R. Okay, and I'll save it. So that's it guys, this is the first video in the new video series. I hope you liked it, I hope you find it uh, useful. And in the next video, uh, we'll do, we will design the roller. Couple of interesting tips in there. See you then.